I have to correct an error here. When I talked about Robocop 2, I said that I thought it was the only Ocean game released on the Famicom. And now here I am with another Ocean game. And The Untouchables lives up to their high standard of quality. The Untouchables was a 1987 film that was a heavily fictionalized account of Elliot Ness's attempts to take down Al Capone. Right from the start, you can tell that this game came from a European computer game developer. The staccato music, forcing you to choose whether you want music or sound effects. And the game is a set of mini-games. Four completely different modes of play across five stages, and all four game styles are awful. Famicom fans point to this game as a perfect example of bad American software, and to that I say, Ocean is a British company. Don't stick Americans with this one. The first stage has you controlling Elliot Ness as he shoots gangsters in the alleys of Chicago. You have a shotgun that fires two shells, and you pop out from around the corner to fire at the gangsters who are sticking their heads out of windows. You're just controlling the cursor here, and the cursor isn't fast enough to catch gangsters who are on the far side of the screen, or even halfway across the screen. You just have to let some of them go past, and any time that there's a gangster out, and Ness is standing in the alley, he is taking damage. You have to clear a certain number of gangsters before you move on to the next alley, and after you clear three alleys, you go on to the second stage. The second stage has you raiding a warehouse in some side-scrolling action, and the B button jumps while A attacks. Yep, it's backwards. Also, if you're moving and try to jump, you get this very low float that covers some distance. You have to stand still and jump if you want to go up a level. You can stand on some of the boxes, but not others, but good luck knowing which are which because they appear identical. You can carry a maximum of 10 bullets, and if you run out, you just can't shoot and you can't do anything. Usually, enemies will drop something to give you more ammo, though. The regular enemies might drop violin cases, though they look more like potions to me. And the ones with an A on them refill all of your ammo. The ones with an E on them refill all of your health. And the ones with an R on them give you unlimited ammo and rapid fire for a short time. Your real goal on this stage is to collect five pieces of evidence that are dropped by the guys in gray hats. Only one gray hat spawns at a time, and it's entirely possible to just keep missing them until time runs out. The best strategy I found was to stand here below this enormous gap in the second floor, because unless they get stuck in a walking loop somewhere, which happens, they'll have to come through here. If you survive this stage, then you go to the bridge shooting gallery, which is different from the alley shooting gallery, because you now have rapid fire shots but you also don't have a crosshair. You have to shoot 16 bottles on this stage in order to complete it, and only one bottle appears at a time. As you move where you're targeting, you'll roll around on the ground a bit, but it's not like you can dodge attacks. As long as there are enemies on the screen, you're taking damage. However, you can rotate through four characters by hitting the select button. Whichever characters you aren't using are slowly healing, while the other one is taking continuous damage, because you can never stop the fire. There's also this tiny E that appears sometimes. That will refill the health for whoever shoots it. If you manage to survive that stage, then you go to another set of alleys. It plays similarly to the first stage, but there's a few key differences. First, now you're able to rotate through characters by hitting select, and you can only do this when they've ducked behind a wall. Second, the time limit is extremely short, but you get extra time for completing an alley section quickly. And finally, if you survive eight segments of this, which is a truly long time, then there's a boss at the end, which is just a mobster who comes out with a Tommy gun. You have to shoot him in the face a few times for him to drop. Now that stage is pretty hard. Between the lack of time and the fact that you're taking continuous damage as you have to shoot literally 100 mobsters, it can be pretty tricky to get through. If you do die, run out of time, or otherwise get a game over, just hitting start at the title screen will continue the game. You don't even lose your score. You have to cycle power if you want to reset. And you might actually need to do that if you've lost a few characters by the time you've reached that alley scene. 
but everything you've been through to that point is nothing compared to stage 5. It takes what was already a bad game and elevates it to one of the worst things I've ever played. Watch closely, because I'm going to show you the stage. Ready? That was it. Seriously, want to see another attempt? There you go. The goal on this stage is to guide the baby carriage through a hail of bullets, and you have to steer the baby carriage by pushing into it. However, when you start the stage, it's about to collide with a barrier, and if you're not pressing left the instant the stage begins, you cannot get the baby carriage out of the way. And complicating that, you have to press start on the screen where it says stage 5, but sometimes, instead of starting the stage, it pauses the screen where it says stage 5, so you can't be 100% sure that you're going to begin the stage when you press start. There's about 1 20th of a second when the stage starts where you can get the baby carriage out of the way of that barrier. That's not an exaggeration, I counted the frames. And the baby dies literally 1 half of a second after the level begins. Again, counted the frames. Now, if you somehow manage to push it, the stage doesn't get any better. You have to guide the carriage down blind alleys, hoping you guess the correct path where it can continue, and sometimes its progress will be blocked by a civilian who just won't get out of the way. So you have to murder an innocent person, which also costs your health, so that the baby carriage will move again. It is one of the worst stages I've ever seen in any video game. Obviously, The Untouchables has a very bad reputation in Japan. And I seriously question how anyone could have considered this something worth releasing. It's less game and more torture device. And as bad as this game looks on video, it's even worse to play. I don't think I have a single positive thing I could say about this one. <laughs>